pleasure and honor to address this August gathering on the occasion of the fourth Human Rights Forum. The International Conference on the Great Lakes Region congratulates the government and the people of Hungary, particularly the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, on establishing the Budapest Human Rights Forum. A series of annual international human rights conferences you have conducted demonstrate an enduring effort by the government of Hungary to find solutions to the legacy and suffering from abuse, discrimination, and violence by millions of people worldwide. I was unable to come to Budapest in person to address you on the topic of prevention of genocide in practice, ideas for cooperation in the Great Lakes region of Africa. But the International Conference on the Great Lakes region is grateful to have been invited and to be represented by Mr. Ashad Sentongo in the fourth Budapest Human Rights Forum. We will certainly learn from you and you will share our experiences in the fight to prevent and punish the crime of genocides, crimes against humanity, and all forms of discrimination in the region. For those who might not be much familiar with the organization, the International Conference on Great Lakes Region is an intergovernmental body with the Executive Secretariat based in Bujumbura, Burundi, and with the membership of the 11 member states, which include Angola, Burundi, Central African Republic, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Rwanda, the Republic of Congo, Brazzaville, Uganda, Kenya, Sudan, Tanzania, and Zambia. This initiative was a result of a sad history in our region following the genocide in Rwanda in 1994 and the blood civil war in the Democratic Republic of Congo between the 1990, 1996 and 1998. Our efforts have been geared towards preventing another genocide in our region, and the initiative is a resolve of our leaders to see never again genocide and in transforming the region into a hub of peace and the prosperity for our people. I appreciate that this year's theme on the prevention of genocide in practice is conducted in the context of the responsibility to protect. We know it's the United Nations instrument that among others demands each individual state to protect its populations from genocide, from the war crimes, ethnic cleansing, and the crimes against humanity, and that the international community can take collective action when a concerned state fails to intervene in a timely and decisive manner through the UN Security Council and in accordance with the Charter of the United Nations. Distinguished participants, the Pact on Peace, Stability, and Development in the Great Lakes region, signed by the heads of state and government from the 11 member states in December 2006 is consistent with the responsibility to protect. Specifically, under Article 23 of the Regional Pact, it states that a member state that is unable or unwilling to honor its obligations under this pact shall account for its failure before the summit, which will determine the consequences of such failure. One of the most important protocol in this pact is the prevention and punishment of the crime of genocide, the war crimes, crimes against humanity, and all forms of discrimination. In this way, the pact opened the space for collective action involving governments, civil society, local communities, and partners to take on the responsibility to transform the historical discourse and practice of war and violence to that of prevention and punishment in the Great Lakes region. Let me highlight the ideals for cooperation in the Great Lakes region. The responsibility to protect and prevention are central concepts in the responsibility to protect 
and the International Conference on the Great Lakes Region Pact of 2006, and provide an appropriate framework within which to generate ideas for cooperation in the Great Lakes Region. First and foremost, it, is, it provides a political will. This is a critical ingredient, especially at the state level, in pursuing legitimate and acceptable ways and means to protect the people and prevent violent conflicts. Political challenges in our region notwithstanding, heads of state and their governments demonstrated immense will to rid the region of instability and promote development by signing the pact and establishing relevant institutional mechanisms to ensure that their common vision is realized. The International Conference on the Great Lakes Region, in its almost five years of existence, has continued to build the cooperation between states, civil society, and then non-state actors to expand and translate this political will into concrete programs of action and activities that respond to the root causes of violent conflicts in our region. In doing so, we seek an approach that highlights and exploits interdependence between different levels of the society and the groups of actors as a necessary condition to finding relevant solutions to problems of the region. Secondly, is the importance of partnership. The underlying spirit of responsibility to protect and the collective responsibility as outlined in the Pact of the Great Lakes Region is our shared by our common humanity to preserve and protect life and to forge partnerships that satisfy our common need to live in peace. Support from the Office of the Special Advisor to the UN Secretary General on the Prevention of Genocide and the Office of the High Commissioner on Human Rights helped to establish a regional committee on the prevention of genocide, war crimes, and crimes against humanity, the first of its kind in the world with representative 11 member states of the Great Lakes region. The ICGR has worked closely with various institutions and academia in meeting our common objectives. I wish here to specifically point to the collaboration that the International Conference on the Great Lakes Region has had with the George Mason University under the Genocide Prevention Program, led by Professor Andre Bartoli, which includes supporting the work of the Executive Secretariat and the Regional Committee on Genocide Prevention in the region. Currently, this work has evolved to include the establishment of national committees in each member state and development of programs to build the capacity of committee members to effectively implement the protocol at national and grassroots level. The ICGR is also grateful to the emerging opportunity to collaborate with the Foundation for International Prevention of Genocide and Mass Atrocities. We would like to believe that we participate in this forum as partners in the struggle to prevent violent conflicts and to look forward to cementing this relationship through the signing of a memorandum of understanding with the Foundation. This will open the space to jointly implement a multi-year team building program in the Great Lakes region. The program seeks to raise awareness of the root causes of genocide and mass atrocities and facilitate dialogue and mediation activities to transform conflicts through peaceful means in the Great Lakes region. As I mentioned, the Executive Secretariat is one of the implementation mechanisms to achieve all the above objectives in the region. We work to translate this responsibility and the commitment by the heads of governments in our member states into practice and draw the collective attention of all actors in the region and the international community to addressing the root causes of violent conflicts in our region. We have also brought the initiative at the grassroots level 
While each member state is sovereign and unique, the International Conference on the Great Lakes Region envisages cooperative efforts with regional actors, international and local partners to promote and advocate for one, proactive strategies to protect citizens, prevent genocide and discrimination, and the fight against impunity. Secondly, is our collective endeavor, endeavor for collective sensitive, conflict sensitive policies and prevent institutions. Thirdly, is the mechanism for early warning and proper response. Fourthly, is the collective instruments on justice and reconciliation. And fifthly, is the networking and information sharing. Six is the capacity building to effectively manage programs. And finally, is education and public awareness. Let me again in conclusion say I'm very grateful to be participating in the fourth Human Rights Forum through this means. And the International Conference on the Great Lakes Region appreciates this opportunity and future collaboration with the Foundation for International Prevention of Genocide and Mass Atrocities. We look forward to working with you to build local capacities, both institutional and communal, to enable the people of the region achieve and enjoy enduring peace. We are further hopeful that efforts such as this will inspire stronger collaboration between the member states of the International Conference on the Great Lakes Region and the government of Hungary in the areas of peace and development. Let me end here by wishing you all successful deliberations. I thank you for your attention.